Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Wednesday. Today is July the 12th, 2023. I'm Reverend Michael J. Burns from Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Coming to you live once again with God's Healing Word, which we broadcast every Monday through Friday. And we're very excited about sharing the truth of God's Word with you today. Praise God. We are talking on the subject of redemption and what it means to be redeemed. And today we're actually speaking about being eternally forgiven. And I'll tell you, we're talking about the subject of divine healing, but most people don't uh, receive their healing because they're still living under a sense of guilt or condemnation over the mistakes and sins they've committed in their lives. But when you see what I want to show you tonight for the Word of God, I'm telling you what, it'll make all the difference in the world and cause you to rise up and lay hold of that which God says belongs to you. Let me encourage you today uh, to be sure and get uh, our free healing confessions. I shared with you a testimony the last couple of days of a friend of my mom's who receives our newsletter, and we happen to have the healing confessions in there. And actually, she and her husband have been using them, and they're already seeing God's healing power manifest in their body. And so I'd like to encourage you to get these today. You say, how do I get them, Pastor Mike? Well, I'm glad you asked. All you have to do is send me an email request to my email, mjbcjf at gmail.com. And if you'll send that request to me, we'll shoot off to you a PDF copy of these free healing confessions that I know will make a world of difference in your life. Praise God. I also want to encourage you today to get our free monthly newsletter. Uh, if you go to our website, mjbministries.org, and then you fill in your name and email in the pop-up window, uh, you'll find that you'll be all set to receive the e-newsletter that goes out on the first of each month. The next e-newsletter will be going out on August the 1st. We've already sent the July one out, but you can actually look at the archives that we have uh, on our website, mjbministries.org. And if you look for the archives there, you'll see, uh, I think up until last May, and we're about to put the June one up, uh, of the e-newsletters there and you can be sure and get that as well. I also want to just say uh, for you who are pastors today uh, and you have a church and you want to hold uh, host MJB Ministries uh, in your church, uh, we do a four-hour Saturday seminar. I know it sounds like a long time, but it really goes by fast because it's on a Saturday morning. We start early and we have 10-minute breaks between each session and then we have about a half hour for lunch, and it costs $30 per person, $25 for the two books, and then $5 that we give back to the host church in order for them to provide the lunch for the people who attend. This is a day of great fellowship, a great uh, team building. It's a day of uh, people growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord, and really discovering the life that they were born to live. If you'd like to host this in your church uh, this year, Go to mjbministries.org forward slash invite. That's mjbministries.org forward slash invite. And be sure uh, when you book this meeting that you also consider having this in the state for Sunday morning services and then Sunday night hosting a great miracle and healing rally. And I know you'd be glad that you did. Also, pastors, I just want to tell you at the top of the broadcast, I have a free gift for you. This is for pastors only. That uh, book I wrote called Church Happens, my newest book, What Your Pastor Needs from the People They Lead. And uh, you can be sure uh, and uh, go to churchhappensbook.com. If you go there and you go to the bottom uh, the second image of this uh, of this book, you see the first image and you see the second image. Right below that, you'll see uh, the words, yes, I'm a pastor. Tap on that, click on that, and then fill in your name and email address, and I'll shoot you off this book in its entirety. Church Happens. It's a 48-page, pocket-sized book, and it'll come with a bulk ordering discount chart because once you read it, I know you're going to want to have it 
to make available or give it away actually to your members of your local church and then your first time guests as well. So be sure and go to churchhappensbook.com and you can order the uh, book there. I'll get a free copy of it, I should say, and I will send it right off to you in the name of Jesus. Now, let's have a word of prayer as we get into tonight's teaching. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you as we get into the word of God tonight that we are going to dig into some truths that will transform the lives of the people who will view this broadcast. And I thank you right now, Heavenly Father God, for the truths of redemption. Now, we are the redeemed of the Lord, and we're going to say so tonight. And we're going to understand clearly what it means to be redeemed and how we can be uh, not only redeemed, but the meaning of that being that we are eternally forgiven and that Satan is eternally defeated. And we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus that you're going to think through my mind and speak through my lips to these, your people. You're going to cause their ears to listen, their minds to be open, and their hearts to be receptive to the things of the Word and of the Spirit of Almighty God. And Father, today again, I welcome the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit into this broadcast tonight. And I'm asking you, Father God, that you'll manifest yourself in confirmation to your Word on behalf of those who are tuning in either live or on the rebroadcast later today, uh, tonight, or in the coming weeks and months, Father God. I thank you that there's no time put on the Word of God. It will have its effect and change the lives of those who receive it. And for everything that will be said, done, revealed, and manifested, I covenant with you now to give you and you alone all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all of the thanks in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. We have glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank God that we can uh, be in the Word of God. And uh, we can absolutely take God at His Word because His Word is true. Can I get an Amen from somebody here today? Let me just take these two banners out. And we're talking about uh, redeem Redeemed. And actually, we're talking about what it means to be redeemed. And today, we're going to be talking specifically about eternally forgiven. Praise God. Now, our opening verses have been found right here uh, in Ephesians 1 and verse number 7, which clearly says, In whom we have redemption. Notice the word redemption. Through his blood, this is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he spilled when he was crucified. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So redemption, again, has to do with the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So we can see here clearly that redemption means the forgiveness of our sins. Praise God forevermore. And so today I want you to have that see, cemented in your heart and mind that you have been redeemed, which means you have been forgiven. And as a result of having been forgiven by God, that means that you have actually not only been forgiven, but that you every hindrance to your receiving all the things you need in this life are now removed or taken out of the way. In other words, you don't have to be sick anymore because you've been forgiven. You don't have to struggle economically or financially because you've been forgiven. You don't have to deal with mental anguish and torments any longer because you have been forgiven. And, you know, I've heard it said, and I don't know whether you've ever heard it said, that many people that are, that are in mental wards and uh, institutions are there because the reason they're there is uh, they are actually struggling with the idea that they've committed this sin unto death, that they uh, have been basically, that God has rejected them, that there's no way they could ever come back into right relationship with God. And and so they believe the lie that the, the devil has told them when the word of God says something completely different. It says that we have been eternally or we have been forgiven. We've been redeemed. And we're going to find out here in a few moments that we've been eternally forgiven. And I'm excited about that. Now, let me just show you here in Ephesians 1 and verse 12 through 14. 
Look at what the scripture says here. This is really super duper powerful here. And I loved it. It says here that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Amen. How many of you know today that you are praised to the glory of God? Your life brings praise to God. Amen. And when you put your faith and your trust in Christ, in whom you also trusted or actually hoped, after you heard the word of truth. Notice the first thing that comes to you is, is the word trusted, which is actually the word hoped here, in whom you also hoped after that you heard the word of truth. So when you hear the word of God, the first thing that comes to you is not faith, really. The first thing that comes to you is hope, and then faith comes. In the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that, notice after that, you believe. So hope comes first, and then you have the belief where you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It's important because a lot of people don't seem to grasp the hold of this great truth that when they hear the word of God, the first thing that comes to them is they hear uh, the message of God's love, God's mercy, God's grace. They have a hope now. Hope is a, a desire that has come into them. And then after they heard the word of truth, after they've had a hope that it's been birthed, they then have where faith comes and they believe and they're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. They experience the full measure of salvation. And then in verse 14, which is the earnest. And we said this yesterday that the word earnest is the down payment of our inheritance, praise God. And uh, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody here today? Now, when it comes to being redeemed, you have to understand something here. And what you have to understand is that the redemption that you and I have received is we've been redeemed uh, in our spirit not necessarily in our soul and our body. It, there is a redemption there, but it's a different thing. Let me show you the scripture here. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Uh, and I pray, God, Paul said, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so notice Paul gives a emphasis here on who you and I really are. We're not just human beings, but we're spiritual beings. We're spirit beings. We have a soul, which is our mind, our will, our intellect, our emotions, and we live in this house called a physical body. Now, the part of us that has been spiritually redeemed is our spirit. Now, here's the thing about the soul being the mind, will, emotions. That can experience a saving of the soul by receiving with meekness or teachableness the implanted word of God. And there is a temporary redemption in our physical bodies. And that temporary redemption is where we experience healing and divine health, which comes supernaturally from God's word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get a good hearty Amen from somebody. Now, just to show you uh, what I'm talking about here, I want you to see this. Uh, this is found in, in Romans, the 8th chapter, and the 23rd verse. But while our spirit has been eternally redeemed, we are still awaiting the full redemption of our soul and our body. And the scripture of Romans 8, 23 gives credence to this. And not only they... Paul, Paul writes to the Romans, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Notice that this, we have received what's coming to our spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of what? Of our body. And so your body has not yet been fully redeemed. Now, here's coming a day, thank God, that you're going to have a glorified body. Where you're gonna, this mortal is gonna put on immortality, where this corruptible is gonna put on incorruption. But until then, we can live in the earth, in this body, and we can have uh, the uh, redemption that's taking place in our spirit affect our physical bodies, our souls, 
and we can experience the very life nature of God and ability of God in us, causing and affecting in us a healing and a cure. Glory to God. Now, here's the thing I want to say. And when I was putting this together earlier today, I, I really felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and saying, what about people that died of sicknesses and diseases and left this world, you know, in, in many cases before their time? And, you know, I know there are a lot of people that say, well, if they died in their 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s or beyond, they say, well, that was just their time. Well, I'm going to say to you that it was not necessarily their time uh, because God says he'll satisfy us with long life and that it's something that we as believers in Christ have, that promise of long satisfied life, Psalm 91 and verse 16. But there are some people that do die early in life. And we don't always have the answer to that. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong unto the Lord, but the things that uh, God that, that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. And so we can see here that you and I actually have uh, these promises of God's word. Now, in this body, we can live. And I want to just share some scriptures with you. I'm not going to have you turn there or show them to you on the screen. I'm just going to read them to you. Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you order to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. This is talking about the life you're living in this physical house right now. And so if you're living in this physical house, you can actually enjoy the benefits of that by yielding yourself, submitting yourselves to obey God instead of obeying the flesh. Now, John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And then, of course, John 4.23 and 24, Jesus said, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So this is talking about the kind of life God expects you and I to live in this natural, physical life. Can somebody say amen to that? I want to either look at these scriptures here because I think these would be really eye-opening uh, to you. The first one is found in Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And let me look here at verse 11 and verse number 12. It says, verse 11 and 12 of uh, Hebrews 9, 11, and, uh, starting at verse 11. But Christ being come, notice this, but Christ being come, a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place. Notice this statement, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, we said earlier, based on Ephesians 1 and verse 7, and Colossians 1 and 14, they both almost say exactly the same thing, that it's through his blood that we receive, we've been re received redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. So redemption means the forgiveness of our sins. Notice again, the Bible talks about here in Romans 9 and verse number 12, that we have been eternally redeemed. So if redeemed or redemption means forgiveness, we can actually say that we have been eternally redeemed or we have been eternally forgiven. Praise God forevermore. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what Jesus' blood does for us. It caused us to experience an eternal redemption and eternal forgiveness. Can you say amen, somebody? Now, I want you to skip the me down here to uh, verse number two. Uh, 24 through verse 26. Notice what it says here. And this is super duper powerful. For God has not entered, 
For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself he entered. Now to appear in the presence of God for who? For you and for me, for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters into the holy place every year with blood of others, speaking of the blood of animals. For then must he, then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But it doesn't say that in verse 26. But now once, look at that word once there. In the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And then come on with me to verse number uh, 27, where it goes on to say this. And I love this here. Let me, uh, let me just put this actually right here. Uh, it says this. And this is really beautiful here. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once, not twice, not a hundred times, not a thousand times, not a million times. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I don't know about you, that's a good place to shout, amen, glory to God. Now it's interesting here, because if you'll actually go to uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and 8, and I would really encourage you to read this uh, tonight, really, before you go to bed. Hebrews 7 and chapter 7 and chapter 8 describes the continual sacrifice of the priests, the Jewish priests, who never finished their ministry of offering animal sacrifices year by year under the Old Testament. Now, what did this actually do? This produced a result, and the result that was produced uh, was of sin consciousness within the lives of the people who lived under the law. Thank God that we're not living under that time right now. Jesus, right now, has doesn't have to offer himself continuously. Like, you'd have to bring animals every year for your sins. Every year, you'd have to have it secured to be dealt with before God. But thank God today, we don't have to do that because Jesus did it once. The priests did it all the time. Consistently, they did it. But Jesus just did it once, and he caused us to be eternally redeemed, and he caused us, glory to God, to be eternally forgiven, praise God, because redemption means the forgiveness uh, of God, amen, according to Ephesians 1, 7 and Colossians chapter 1, verse number 14. See, here's the thing that I want to say to you, and I want you to really hear this study, that sin is not the issue with God. Why would I say a statement like that? Well, because uh, we have eternal redemption, which means we have eternal forgiveness of sins. And now listen, friends, it is not temporary forgiveness or a temporary redemption but it is an eternal redemption. It is an eternal forgiveness. That is exactly what scripture says that you and I have right now. Now, I want you to go with me to Hebrews. We're going to close on this. Hebrews chapter 10. And let's look at verse 1. And we're going to go down to verse number 2 here. And eventually we're going to finish with verse 3 and verse number 4. It says here, for the law, having a shadow uh, of good things to come, thank God it only had a shadow though, and not the very image of the things that were to come, can never, with those sacrifices, talking about the animal sacrifices, which they offered year by year continually, could they continually make the comers thereunto perfect? It was not possible. For then would they have not ceased to be offered. If they could have done that, they would never would have stopped. Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscious uh, conscience of sins. Now look what it goes on to say here in verse 3 and verse 
number four. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. This is sin consciousness. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. I want you to see this here clearly, friend, that this is not something that you and I uh, can just say, uh, you know, we have had a partial or temporary forgiveness or redemption, but we have had an eternal redemption, praise God. And listen, if we have been eternally redeemed, what would it go? Thank God that if we have been eternally redeemed, then we can say with great confidence and with great boldness today that we have also uh, been freed from every reason that the enemy would try to give to us why we should stay sick or why we should be sick. Listen, you don't deserve sickness when you've been forgiven. Forgiveness means to release or to send away. And you've been released and your sins have been sent away by the blood of Christ. God even says he's put them in the sea of his forgetfulness. He's removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. And the reason is, is because west will never run into east and east will never run into west. And so we have the privilege of promise. We have the assurance given to us by God that we can live in the fullness of God every day of our lives. Can you say amen somebody? Hey, I want to just uh, say this to you here today. If you're a pastor, I have a free gift for you. It's called my latest book, Church Happens, where your pastor needs from the people they lead. This is a 40-page pocket-sized book, and I want to send it to every pastor, uh, or by vocational pastor, or full-time pastor, for free. Now, you can buy it if you want, if you're not a pastor. But for pastors, if you just go to churchhappensbook.com, that's churchhappensbook.com, and go there, then I'm telling you what, you could get this book for free. Just, uh, you'll see to the second image of this book, right below it, yes, I'm a pastor. Go down the first image of this book, the second image, right below that, you'll see, yes, I'm a pastor. Click on that, tap on that, fill in your name and email address, and I'm going to email you this book in its entirety with uh, a bulk ordering discount chart, because once you read it, you'll want to have copies of it for the members of your church. And so we want to have that available to you, and we want you to take advantage of it as well in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord forever. Now, pastors, I want you to also know that uh, we, uh, we, I come and I do this seminar on Saturday mornings called Discover the Life You Are Born to Live, based on two books. My first book, Discover the Life You Are Born to Live, and the second one, based on the same title, is Your Companion Study God, full of questions uh, that are true and false, fill in the blank, multiple choice. And we will come with these two books, and they'll be given to each person for a price of $30. That's $25 for the two books. And then $5 we give back to the host church to provide the lunch for the seminar because it's a four-hour seminar with 10-minute breaks in between and a half hour for lunch. It goes by very fast, but it's a day of great fellowship, a day of great learning, a, great, a day of great uh, a, a team building. It's a day where, glory to God, people discover the life they were born to live. And we want to come, and if you go to mjbministries.org forward slash invite, that's mjbministries.org forward slash invite, invite we would be happy to come and set up a time that will work for you and for your uh church membership praise god now when we do come for the seminar on saturday we'd like to stay for sunday morning services and then host a sunday night miracle and healing uh rally we'll teach a word preach a word on sunday morning services but sunday night we'll host a healing and a miracle rally that your church will never be the same again. Praise God. Now, let me also suggest to you, Pastor, that you get our live worship album 
called Let Your Glory Fill This House. It's only available digitally on, on uh, digital platforms like iTunes or wherever you would get your digital music. There's a cost to it, but these are all original songs. This was done live. This was a high-end production, and we would like to encourage every one of you to get a copy of this album. And praise God, I know you'll be blessed if you do. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for joining us in this great uh, teaching. We're going to continue tomorrow dealing with uh, redeemed, and we're going to talk about being redeemed from the curse. And I know you're not going to want to miss that as well. I love every one of you. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. You know, I pastored for 35 years in Long Island, New York. And one of the greatest experiences of my life with my beautiful wife, Cynthia. And I can tell you that we would really be honored to travel to where you are, minister for churches all over this country. If you really want us to come, and we really pray you do, the favor of God is on us, the blessing of the Lord is on us. Go to mjbministries.org forward slash invite. And we'll be happy to talk to you about dates. Uh, we want to fill our schedule up. Because we believe the more people we can minister to, the better in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you so much. Lord bless you. We'll see you tomorrow on the broadcast in Jesus' name.